Hi guys, this is uh, Yaron Batan, back here for Heroes Manufactured Live, and today we've got an upcoming guest, uh, uh, a guy that I actually met uh, a few years back at the Ottawa Comic Con. His name is Martin uh, Deschatelets, a uh, great guy, great artist, illustrator, and uh, does a ton of uh, amazing work that we're going to be exploring shortly with uh, you guys. And uh, yeah, we are going to do another uh, session today after this uh, for the comic uh, vault and the toy and collectibles uh, segment. So definitely stay tuned to that. We do have some great news coming up uh, this July. Uh, we, we've more or less officialized it. Uh, we are going to be releasing the uh, um, Amazon, uh, it, it most likely going to be through Amazon Video Prime, is going to be the Heroes Manufactured uh, Creators Unleashed TV series. Um, it's uh, Right now we're looking, we're hoping it will continue as a TV series, but we definitely have our first season. It's going to be a six-episode season shot in New York, uh, uh, Miami, uh, also uh, San Diego, in Toronto as well, Niagara Falls. Uh, Detroit City, so you got some really cool uh, uh, up-and-coming uh, uh, places uh, that, that we can check out, both the events and the scene that's happening in, in North America. So, uh, yeah, definitely stay tuned, and uh, we're going to start now with uh, uh, bringing Martin on board, and uh, yeah. Hey, Martin, how's it going? Uh, hey, good, yourself? Great, great to have you on the show today. I appreciate you uh, coming on. So, Martin, I mean, tell me a little bit about yourself. Where do you live exactly? I mean, I know you're not in Toronto. No, I'm in Ottawa. In Ottawa. Yeah. And yeah. and uh, you've been in Ottawa resident for forever, or is it? Uh, no, eight years. I was in Toronto beforehand. Um, oh, yeah, really? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, because I went to school in Sheridan, to Sheridan, and then uh, lived in Toronto for six years before oh, moving to okay. Oh, great. And yeah. if you could tell me, I guess, so we'll start off with a little bit of your story. You can tell us a little bit about yourself, kind of what inspired you getting into drawing and, and, and all that. Uh, yeah. So uh, I have a, a diploma in uh, classical animation uh, and nice. a diploma in computer animation. Uh, I've always been more of an illustrator, uh, but I went to, into animation just because it was a bit more mainstream and I thought there'd be a bit more work in that industry. Uh, but since I graduated, uh, I've done a bit of animation, but I've mostly done either 3D uh, modeling or illustration work. Uh, oh, once I saw how, nice, nice. how animators get paid and the amount of time they have to put in, I was like, yeah, there's no way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no way I'm doing this for a living. For um, sure, for sure. And I mean, you've been, you so you were, uh, you did the whole program there at uh, Sheridan as well? It was a post-grad uh, program for 3D animation. So you needed a diploma in order to get in. For 3D uh, animation, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a crash course. It was a, I think it was 10 months. And you, um, you did a you did a bit of 2D animation there as well, from, from what I saw? Or I know, that Sheridan was purely 3D. Purely 3D, okay. Because I know yeah. they have a 2D classical uh, program that they had at Sheridan. Yeah, they have like a three or four year program there. Um, so they, they're still practicing 2D animation there? Some, yeah. No, of there's still a lot of uh, 2D animation studios out there, so uh, it's not hand drawn anymore as much. Uh, it's all done in uh, you know Tune Boom Harmony and stuff like that, so it's bigs and but uh, yeah, there's still a demand for it. Very yeah. nice. And so, uh, I mean, I guess being an independent artist, but also being in the business, uh, uh, how do you view yourself in the industry? I mean, because uh, uh, do you only work freelance or do you work uh, with part with with other agencies, companies as well? Uh, how, how does that work for you guys? Yeah, I've been doing both. Honestly, it changes all the time. Uh, oh, nice. I've done, I've done, you know. So I've been doing this since two thousand eight, so like twelve years now. Uh, it's it's a mix. It's a mix of both. If I get if I get hired as a contract, uh, you know, with a studio, then I'll go do that for that period of time, and then come back and do freelance or vice versa. Um, so yeah, so right now at the moment I'm with uh, Mercury Filmworks in Ottawa. So I've been there for a year and a half. Started as freelance, and then last year they hired me full time. Uh, so I am now doing illustration work. So I'm painting backgrounds for animated. Uh, nice, and and because yeah. you do you do a lot of different things. You do comic books. You do um, uh, video games. You do animation. Stories, birds and kid books and. 
Yeah, it's uh, all over the place. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, I, uh, I know. I know. There's this one game you, you mentioned, Nova Knights. Uh, yeah. uh, you also put a posting on our uh, on our Facebook group there. Yes. Um, and I'll love to show this to to, to the audience here, but uh, uh, th this is the the main cover, I guess, for it. Just kind of a splash for it, yeah. Just to show nice. the characters and the logo. Yeah, and and this game has been in development for for how long now? Uh, a year and a half, two years. Oh, um, and right now we're, we're about 98% done uh, a polished demo of the first level, okay. uh, which is about half an hour of gameplay. And uh, that'll be, uh, you know, we're going to send that out to uh, publishers. We actually already have uh, one of the big three publishers on board. I can't say which one, but uh, since uh, for a little while now they've uh, they've accepted our, our game already, uh, even though it's still in development. So nice. it's pretty exciting. Yeah, and we've got, uh, you know, they send us some, uh, some some hardware to work with to, so that it go, it works well with their uh, and do their you notice a big, and Do you notice a big difference from working uh, on a video game versus, like, uh, traditional animation or or even comic books? Is there is there a difference in flow or...? Um, yes, I would say the easiest is comic books oh, wow. uh, when it comes to flow and creativity and all that. Um, but the hardest would have to be a video game uh, wow. because you're not just work. It's not just visual. It has to actually work. And it's not right? just you. Right? You're working with a team. No, that's the thing. People. Like what I do has to work with what the developers are doing yeah. and vice versa. So even though I think something looked cool at, they might come and tell me, like, no, we can't. There's no way. Like, not going to happen. This is way too much coding. A lot more, lot, lot more lim limitations and a little more teamwork in terms of figuring things out. I oh, think. absolutely. Um, so for this game, we're actually seven or eight people working on it. So oh, cool. we have a, a classical animator that's doing the character animations uh, yeah. in Harmony, Toon Boom. Uh, and uh, sorry, no, he's doing it in Flash. Um, oh, and it? then all the artwork and you know, concept work and level design, that's all me. Okay. Uh, and then we have uh, a game designer, which he does all the all the planning, all the, you know, press this button is going to do that, and all the move combinations are this, and these are the menus, and this will take you there, this will take you there. Oh, wow. uh, and we have a couple of uh, programmers as well, and a uh, sound designer. So he's doing all the uh, the sounds for the game. That's pretty uh, cool. Pretty much have a, you've worked with a you've worked soundtrack on for it as well, so. Yeah, and you've worked on some movies as well. I know you mentioned. Uh, I'm just going to show some movies and TV shows here. From what you showed me was uh, Harry Potter, um, a Netflix Hilda show, uh, uh, the Disney Tangled Adventures there as well. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, how was that working on those those projects? Because I mean, that's also oh, really cool. Comic, right? you, you learn you learn so much working on working on these these types of things, and you you all get to realize and appreciate how many. How many steps everything goes through? Wow. So I was in the so say for Harry Potter, I was in the 3D department, but there's about 15 other departments that have to go through these shots as well. So you're ju you're just a small slice of the final product, and it's really cool to see everything come together at the end. Wow! So, and you were yeah, in, uh, and how about Hilda and uh, Tangled? How was that like for you? Working so that, that's amazing. So Hilda, I'm working on season two, which is coming out in. And Tangle actually just released on Disney Plus this week, uh, season three. Uh, so oh, yeah, yeah, Hilda, again, Hilda, uh, Hilda, Hilda like, season two is coming out in fall, right? On Netflix. Hilda, yeah. Okay, yeah. nice. So season at least two. at least we could expect to see some new some new things during uh, under quarantine because they're saying quarantine exactly, quarantine. yeah, and uh, it's it was amazing. Hilda is, was one of my favorite shows before I was hired to to do season two. Oh, uh, wow, it's amazing, and uh, yeah, just very creative show, and, and I love it. Yeah, I was I was pumped to work. For yeah, sure. and I saw the Disney Tangled. Uh, uh, how's how's it working with Disney? I mean, I'm sure you've uh, it, it's a different experience just working. Oh with yeah, Tangled, it's right? super intimidating. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, right? it's one well, nice you... thing to have on your resume, that's for sure, right? Yeah, uh, but at first it was like, oh man, can I even do this? Like, show you a like, say I have to paint a location, a castle, let's say this angle of that castle. They'll send you. Uh, a key shot of that castle that you have to recreate. It's a different view and the lighting is different and all that kind of stuff. And it's full of textures and all that. And you're looking at it, you're just like, 
I don't even know how that was done. Wow. <laughs> so, you, you know, you, you go in Photoshop and you, you look at all the layers and you're like, oh, okay, oh, that's done. That's how that's done. And then you build it up and yeah. And so, so tell me also about this. I mean, I see the, the big Nick, that's, is that one of your like earlier comic books that you, you put out? No, that's one of our latest ones. Uh, okay. So that was in 2016, we got issue one. And then okay. 2017, issue two, 2018, issue three. Uh, we do want to do the issue four. Uh, just haven't had time yet because of life. Uh, but yeah, that, that's been our biggest uh, our biggest hit, I guess, so far. Uh, it started off as a joke uh, for the Sudbury Graphicon. And then uh, there was a seemed to be a pretty big demand for an actual comic book. So we decided, oh, crap. Okay, now we got to, I guess we should try to make something. So uh, it's kind of a co action comedy doesn't take itself seriously whatsoever but uh we've we have a really fun time with this character and with the uh the environments and the you know the, the places that you know that the characters that we have in there are all you know northern ontario kind of sudbury based stuff so we throw in some ottawa in there as well and uh, we've had some crossovers with aurora man and auric and yeah i see i see you have you have guys. aurora man there uh, uh that's from jeff uh, burton there right i, I believe yeah. he's the yeah, that's so. That's issue awesome. three has a pretty big issue three has a pretty big crossover with six or seven other uh, Canadian uh, comic book characters. Oh, that's amazing! That's yeah, you're part of the mm -hmm. alliance, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. CCBA, really cool. yeah, awesome. it's cool to see them all come together and fit together and interact, and uh, it's it's really interesting. I love it. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and one other one here, I also see. I mean, uh, it's is the Earth's finest. Uh, um, tell us a little bit about that story because I know that that that's one of your own as well, right? Yeah, so that was in 2014, I think. So the two main characters are actually me and Kevin, uh, who helps me with producing these comics. Uh, we just, we always thought, oh, it would be cool to you know have a comic about yourself and you know be a superhero. Uh, but then we realized like how much we would suck at being heroes. So we're like, you know, let's make a comic about that about two guys that are forced to be superheroes, but they want nothing to do with it. Uh, so it's kind of a mix between like Power Rangers meets I don't know. Uh, it's 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 stupid. It's just two guys. It's conversations that we've had in real life that we just decided to put in the comic book. And, and, um, well, and no, I, and I remember we featured that actually in the trailer uh, of our first Heroes manufactured film. I know okay. there was like a, a quick shot of it when I met you in Ottawa. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, uh, and and that that was that, that was back in 2016. So you'd only had been in the market probably for about a year and a half, I assume, right? Exactly. Yeah, we had Morningwood Guardian one and two before that, so that's a done. Morningwood's a done thing, I think, for now. Uh, the story's done in, in these two issues, but uh, and then instead of continuing on Earth's Finest, we actually decided instead of you know having two properties, having Big Nick and Earth's Finest was just kind of too much to juggle. So Earth's Finest is now part of Big Nick. The characters are in there. Um, you saw the pages you just showed a while back. Uh, yeah. The Earth's Finest characters were in there, so yeah. Oh, nice. And this part this, of the same uh, universe Seth, now. This set the uh, the Sasquatch or Seth the Sasquatch. That's uh, uh, is that that's is that a children's uh, book? It looks like that's a children's book. Yeah, it was uh, funded on Kickstarter, nice. so it did very well. I got the whole thing, you know, printed uh, out of China. Came on a boat. Uh, we sold a whole wow. bunch of them. Uh, it was stores it was libraries had them uh, school boards had them it's a bilingual book uh, english and french so educators were really interested in that kind of stuff so and yeah so, it was a that was a big hit i do plan on doing a series with that but again time <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and one thing like, i i went on your website snooped around a little bit i mean this was an image like a, uh, some life drawing work that you you did in, in the past I yeah. mean, it, it's it, it. You obviously have a talent. I mean, this is stuff that you did, I guess, at Sheridan, or is this after? Or? Uh, no, that was just life drawing uh, get-togethers that that happen here once a week in Ottawa. Uh, that was, a, yeah, I think that says 2013. So that's the last time I did that. A while back, uh, yeah. I had a chance to, but I mean, I've those are the life again, skills but. that you've kind of uh, essentially, uh, I mean, put into place with a lot of the work that you're doing now. Correct? Yes. Yes, and uh, I used to teach at the Ottawa School of Art as well, and all the uh, the models I would have come in were always dressed as superheroes. Oh, so that's cool. Superhero action poses, life drawing Get, stuff. Getting, like, so cosplayers was too, or how, how, was that what you guys did? Yeah, it was, it was cosplayers with, you know, we had like some steampunk stuff and stuff like that. 
We had like Captain America come in and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's funny. Cause... Steam steampunk. I mean, is it still is it is it still a big thing? I mean, it's always been a big thing. It, it, like, yeah, it goes in and out of phases. Maybe. I have no idea. I don't follow it, but yeah. No, I know. <laughs> it's not my thing, but yeah. No, you know, they, they had a Netflix series about a year or two ago that came out about steampunk cosplay, and I was like, ah, you know, it's fun. I just, uh, I, I, I like seeing it, you know, personally, but yeah. it's weird. I've noticed that the scene kind of goes in and out, and we're a show that explores all creativity, so I mean, it's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. it's nice to see that. I mean, definitely with a focus on, like, illustrators and all that. Um, but one thing uh, I also noticed you did you did some of this work here on uh, uh, with the, the Power Rangers Spawn the TMNT Baby Yoda which is very recent I mean tell us a little bit about this work if you can so I try to vary my work as well um, from cartoony to a bit more realistic like the uh, Power Ranger helmet um, yeah you know, it's all study really and uh, you know working with textures or lighting or glows or shapes uh, I'm I'm obviously a big a big geek when it comes to you know animated characters and comic book characters, so that's a lot of what I draw uh, for my own you know on my own time for my own enjoyment, I guess. And uh, yeah, so I just love you know doing different different types of stuff just to show a range as well, which I found was really helpful when it comes to landing jobs uh, to have a lot of range in your drawings, and which is also why uh, I don't just do drawing or you know animation i do 3d as well i do storyboarding which i've done for tv shows. um it's good to have a, to expand what you can do uh you know so that way you you have a better chance of landing some work uh when you know when you get laid off or, and when a contract is over you know you, you open a lot more doors that way no doubt no doubt yeah and uh i mean just to, to go back a little bit on like your you, i mean we see that you do a lot of character work, but you also do a lot of like background work. Uh, what was this for specifically? Uh, I was just myself, uh, just a portfolio piece. Uh, so I took some of the techniques that I learned uh, working on Tangled and decided to do you know something different with it. Um, oh wow! So you really picked up you pick up on the different techniques from a lot of the different artists that you're working on in the show. Sorry, oh, for sure. Yeah. Here. yeah. So I mean, uh, no, that's pretty. That's pretty awesome. I also noticed that uh, you have like a really cool. Uh, uh, a 3D uh, a background as well. I mean, you were mentioning that earlier, but uh, mm -hmm. this is just some of the work that you put out. This is incredible. I mean, how long Thank would you. it take you to model something like that? In, in, and what do you use? Like, uh, this, Maya, Maya or? this is all Maya. Um, okay. I use Maya or 3D Max. Uh, they're pretty similar. Uh, Yo, very this similar. is about a couple of days' work. Uh, a lot of Photoshop involved as well for all the coloring and textures, but. Uh, yeah. Very cool, very cool. I mean, I used to use 3D Studio Max as well back in the day. Um, I used to train on it actually, so uh, definitely a great program. And played with yep. my, I played around with my. It's the same concept with a lot of these programs, yep. but you, you build your own textures and everything in there, and you, yep. you everything in Photoshop. Yep. Wow, very nice yep. work. Very nice oh, work. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I noticed also some of this work that you did more in 2D, but. Uh, again, some great title. Uh, yeah, more of a more of a graphic design kind of stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. title cards, title faces. It's awesome. I mean, these are, these are great, and and these are for comic books, or are these just made. No, uh, that was for some video games. Uh, okay, that that has to do with that that uh, that last uh, three not, that I was showing as well, or. Uh, no, that was for. Um, I used to work at a place called Magmic. We did mobile games for Mattel and Hasbro. Oh wow. Yeah, so these were just like level titles, I guess, that would pop up. So this is all like concept work, of course. But uh, yeah, we did all the stuff for like X Cube and Apples to Apples and Skip Bo and uh, was a bunch of a uh, bunch of different card games and stuff. So we did some cool stuff. Very nice, very nice. And so mm -hmm. I noticed like you're 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 under a specific uh, comic book label as well. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so expired comics is that's. Kevin Montpellier. So we started off in 2012 with the Morningwood Guardian uh, comics. So issue one and two that we released at the same time, uh, also digitally. And it actually ended up being number one on uh, iBooks, which was really cool. Uh, not for long, but it was number one on there. So that, that, you know, that gave us kind of the confidence to keep going. Uh, so after that, we did the uh, Earth's Finest, uh, which is our personal favorite comic that we did. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so we went from there and then the big Nick stuff and then the kids book and, 
uh, you know, it's a passion, a passion that we have to do comics and books. But you're doing this full time, right? Like this is your your full time gig. No, no, oh, no everything, is, everything is just on my own time, evenings or weekends. Oh, that's amazing! So it's, it's yeah, it's become a second career in a sense. That's nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So no, and then we, got, I mean, we actually I got a contract. I have a day job and I still do this as well. So I mean, it's uh, and building that up, but it's it's yeah. quite nice and. Uh, you know, and I, I admire people's talents. I admire what, what, what everyone's doing and, and the fact that you're, you know, exploring it and growing with it. It's amazing. So, I mean, that being said, I mean, because you've worked in like in gaming and animation and comics now and, and a lot of the storyboards I notice as well uh, on your site, mm-hmm. you do a lot of storyboards for, for different videos, for different films, for, for uh, TV I, commercials. Yeah. TV commercials. Okay. When I was in Toronto, I was working for a marketing firm and we did a lot of TV commercials. So yeah, no, and then Toronto gets a lot of that work. I mean, I, I've worked in the film industry here. I came from a film entertainment background, wanting to okay. get into classical animation, wanting to go to Sheridan, realizing I didn't want to sit there all day and draw the same image twenty times in a row. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, twenty four times for that one second, right? And, uh, <laughs> so I mean, to me, that was a bit of insanity, and and. Uh, uh, I realized film was an easier medium for me to tell uh, stories mm-hmm. with, but it's interesting because you're a guy who's kind of like working it in two different ways. But and I and I find a lot of animation people get into comics because there's it's another way to let out that that. that well, voice. that's the thing. Yeah, even though I worked full time in that industry, I still need a hobby to do my own stuff, right? So it's yeah. Kind no, of, I, I, you need that creative outlet, but you need your own creative outlet, not someone else's idea. So, it's, and so when, when you say that you work in that industry, you work in the film industry, but then you, uh, I'm, I'm just trying you know, to understand. Like animation or like the art industry, let's say, like, you know. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't really matter who I'm working for. Um, I still feel the need to do my own thing. That's amazing. That's yeah. that's absolutely amazing. So, I mean, that's the thing. Like, uh, your, your artistic voice, you know, speaks speaks volumes both in the the commercial world and the independent world which is nice i mean you 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 know you seldom see that uh, often with with artists so i mean it's uh you, 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 i feel like you're one of those cherry picked gems you got to like find <laughs> and, you know explore yeah. and, and and really uh yeah expose you out to the world and just just show people the, the beautiful work that you do um, and, and I mean, one kind of last question, I mean, uh, or so, but like, if you have any tips for, for other artists trying to break in, but also like, what can we expect from you, Martin, in the near future? Are there any new projects that you're working on as well? Anything you'd like to share? Yeah. So to expect wise is expect a lot of competition, but don't, you know, don't give up. Uh, I find at first I used to be like, oh, I can't do that. This guy's way better than me, son of a bitch. Um, but you get to a point where, like, as you mature as an artist, um, you get to appreciate other artists more, and you get to, uh, I guess, try to put. Well, you push yourself to be at that level. Um, so you know, it's always it's a lot of artists are hard on themselves. Yeah, um, or they won't, they're afraid to show their work. Right, so you just got you got because people will judge. People always judge artwork. It doesn't matter. But you know what? what? You it's, it's very true. Like I'm just uh, I'm I'm bringing something completely different into this. But like I was watching a YouTube video today about how to make YouTube videos, and mm. it's funny. You know, a lot of these these personalities are taking ideas from other personalities, just like an artist would take ideas from another artist. Or yeah. you know, so really. I, I get that, and it makes sense because I mean, you're like it, it, even like I see you know people that are trying to make money. If you're trying to be an investor or something like that, you're looking at other investors. What are other investors doing, right? So it's it's a very yeah. similar thing, and it's it's uh, interesting that every trade has its own version of that. But you want to be the next Jim Lee or yeah, Bob, Lee, Bob Liefeld, but I mean, we're not going to go there. <laughs> no, no, that's you know these are. These are exceptions, I think. You just have to push yourself to be the best that you can be and try to be original without, yeah. you know, copying anyone. Uh, but you got to get a place where you're comfortable and, you know, um, and, and it shows when an artist is comfortable with what they do or are also willing uh, to learn new things, which is super important because uh, every job you'll get, you're going to learn new things and you're going to put all these experiences together to hopefully build your own portfolio. 
and uh, make yourself better as well, which is always kind of the point for an artist. You can't, you can't really stop. You have to keep going, especially with technology and all. Especially when it comes to 3D, like if you if you don't do 3D for six months, you're you're out of the game, man. <laughs> oh, no, for sure, for sure. It and moves so, so fast, but you just got to keep keep at it. And it's good to surround yourself with other artists as well, because it's the community is just amazing, and everyone encourages each other. And you know, it's you build up uh, together. So. Yeah. yeah, no, for sure. And let me ask you, I mean, do we do you have any new projects that you're working on right now that are, that we so, can uh, see in the near future? Yeah, so Nova Knight, uh, if you guys go to novanightsgame.com, uh, you can sign up there for newsletters and there's actually a uh, like a preview trailer of the game. Yeah, and there I just I just added your banner to so anyone who needs to 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 get right yeah, into Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys can check that out. It's uh, it's not a complete trailer. We're working on that now, but uh, so super exciting you know we've got one of the big publishers on one of the big three publishers on board so it's going to be a console game uh four player co-op game it's uh, heavily inspired by cast pressures if everyone's played that game uh it's just a game we loved and we thought you know that game was never followed up so let's make something like that if not better uh, dare we say it's it's been a lot of work it's a uh, a lot of communication and you know it's it's again all on our own time so we meet once a week every sunday all day we this game uh so we've got the first level pretty polished so we're gonna see where it goes from there but it's really exciting and on our facebook group or on a, on, a, on that website you know we're gonna put updates as to, to what's going on and where people will be able to get the game once it's done and yeah so i put a lot of artwork and concept work on the facebook if you go to expired games on Facebook, okay. uh, there's a yeah. lot of you see some a lot of cool stuff there as well. So is it, yeah. there's expired is it expiredgames.com? Is that is that the or is it uh, so we have expiredcomics.com where we have our comics and our books. Yeah. And then uh, we have expired games, which is this Nova Knights uh, game that we're working on. So expired games is just on it's just a Facebook uh, group. Oh, it's a Facebook group. Very nice, yeah. very nice. Okay, well, listen, th thanks, Martin, for coming out today. I appreciate you uh, being on the show. And, um, well, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, and, you know, love to have you back on again uh, sometime in the near future. We're definitely yeah, going to yeah. be a lot more artists uh, and bring, so we've got, we've got some really cool artists coming up in the next few weeks. I know I mentioned, like, uh, Andrew Thomas. Uh, uh, we're, we're talking to him as well. It's all about scheduling for us now as well. I know we've got uh, uh, Sean Fournier, who's, uh, who works with, uh, um, uh, I believe, Dynamite Comics as well. He's done some work with nice. the Red Sonia series. So there's quite a few there. Uh, thanks again, Martin. I appreciate that. Well, thank and, you. Uh, looking forward to talking to you soon, all right? I appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, Martin. So, uh, yeah, guys, we're just going to get back into what we usually do after uh, uh, an interview. Uh, we're going to go into the Comics Vault segment. Uh, so there we go, Comics Vault. And uh, we, we do have, uh, the for this week, we're going to go over a specific book, uh, seeing that we did bring Martin on board as well. And uh, this is this is a new book that came out recently. It's uh, called Paint Characters, the Marvel Studio Way. Uh, uh, you can actually find it on Amazon. It's a great little book. Uh, sorry about the little glare there. Uh, but it does show you, I mean, if you're looking to, to paint in uh, digitally uh, specific characters, I mean, these are these are specific artists that have worked on the uh, the Marvel movies. But they give you a lot of conceptual art here, as you can see, uh, how the Hulk was made. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's nice visually. Uh, they give you some ideas. They even show you a bit of the 3D modeling going from, like, the classic uh, Captain America into the, what we know today here uh, with regards to the Captain America that we see in all the movies. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's quite nice in that sense. There's a lot of nice little uh, Iron Man uh, versions as well. They give you a nice breakdown of all the characters. And then they give you a little bit more conceptual work here the development step-by-step -step processes. Uh, so really cool visual, visual, uh, uh, I guess, log of what they're doing, how they create the Spider-Man characters. So, I mean, if you're into, like, the, the Marvel uh, Universe stuff, the MCU, again, more specific details there with regards to the modeling of the characters, so with regards to the Hulk, how that's done. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, a guy like Martin would definitely know a lot about this stuff because uh, it's, uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it's the movie industry, but yet the comic book world as well. So definitely check it out. Again, how to paint characters, the Marvel Studio way. Definitely check it out. It's on Amazon, and uh, you can definitely get it on there on there, and a few other places. So um, we're going to go now into our toy and collectibles segment. Um, this week I have another uh, a really cool uh, statue here. 
from Bone Designs. I had another one last week, for, last week from Bone Designs. It was the Colossus. This week we've got Spider Woman. Uh, I picked this up a, a, a while back, but uh, definitely a nice bust uh, for uh, Julia uh, Carpenter, the character playing Spider Woman uh, in the comics. Uh, so we're gonna open this up and just give you guys a nice little insight uh, to a nice collectible item. Uh, so what's what's cool about this is it's 6.5 inches tall overall, sculpted by uh, the Kacharik Brothers, uh, limited supply. So this is a, a nice little out of 2,000. It's 16.92, so limited to that uh, uh, number. So pretty cool in that sense. Uh, we're gonna open this nice little bust up and check it out. So. This is what it looks like. It comes all ready. So it's not, not, not like the Colossus where you have to actually put it together. This one's pretty pretty cool. A nice little 3D statue there for you to model off of if you're sketching. If you like to, to get a cool uh, torso, you know, you got it all there. Um, I, I love these collectibles. I mean, I, I like the limited edition ones. Like I said, it's about 2000 so you can see right there. Pretty cool. Uh, but, yeah, definitely check it out if you want to get a nice little closer view. I would definitely pick this up. I mean, I got this for about uh, 40 bucks uh, at the time. Um, I think it was re regularly on sale for about 60 bucks, so I got it for a nice deal. But if you go to your local comic shop, definitely recommend it. Uh, you can check it out. And, uh, yeah, so that's it for this, this week's show. I appreciate uh, you guys checking us out again. Um, we are expecting next week, uh, I believe Sean Forty, uh, Forney is going to be on the show as well um, from uh, Dynamite Comics. He also is a he's a he's uh, an artist that uh, uh, does a lot of work, uh, a lot of commission work. He'll explore that with us. Um, and, yeah, definitely check us out again. Always a reminder is that we're going to have this new uh, Heroes Manufactured Creators Unleashed show coming out uh, in, in July, we're looking at right now. Uh, probably going to be on um, uh, on Amazon Prime Video. Um, potentially Netflix we're actually talking right now to. We're, 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 there, there is an outlet that it's going to be on for streaming. So either Amazon or Netflix – uh, in the works, so uh, love to see you guys uh, check it out and check out more of our videos. We are going to have some more how-to videos coming out soon, um, and and some step-by-step -step, uh, type videos as well as uh, top ten. We're looking at top ten comic books from certain eras: Silver Age, Bronze Age, Golden Age. So definitely want to bring that a little bit more to the channel. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. It's called uh, Heroes Manufactured Live. Uh, so yeah. Love to see you guys come out soon, and uh, thanks for uh, coming out for the show.